All right, welcome to week one of the Domain 9 series. Now, normally I do these on Sundays, which is procrastinator day for me, but since the new patch just came out and I had a little bit of time to explore, and there are a few things that you wanna kinda knock out before the week ends, I wanted to go ahead and do this early. But if you would like me to do the week guide sooner, let me know down in the comments. But starting out, we did finally get that level increase, but unfortunately we still can't get to 95. So what I think is going to happen is we're going to get one level increase every week since they did say we're going to be reaching level 95 within the patch. And this patch is only gonna last for about six weeks. So now let's go ahead and take a look at our recommended tab and go to the casual tab. Now, personally, I don't like a lot of the stuff moved here. I feel like I have to click more, but let's go ahead and take a look anyway. So with the end of the week coming, of course you wanna check your artificial island and click on this present so that way you can collect the resources because remember, you can only hold these resources for 24 hours. On top of that, you may need to go visit your artificial island. And once you're in the artificial island, at least they made this simpler to get to, to where all you have to do is just click on this triangle up top. But once you're in here, you wanna make sure you check your exchange store and buy your weekly items before the week resets. And lastly, while you're inside, you wanna make sure you clear your enemies since they reset every Monday. And at 12 o'clock, you wanna check around here to see if you have a mysterious vendor so that way you can get those special resources. But if you do not end up getting a mysterious vendor, be sure to check your friends or cruise islands because you can get eight extra a week. Also within the casual tab, we have fishing. You ideally wanna to try to get your fishing to level nine. That way you can buy your weekly standard matricy. If it's a good one, I would definitely pass on Subasa. But if you're trying to level up your fishing, one of the best ways to do it is to buy 100 to 150 green bait, then buy purple bait for a fish of your choice, or if you don't have time for the week, just use the rest of your available bait to buy purple bait. And we can't forget about Ronnie. The unfortunate thing is that it does not teleport you there, but you do want to make sure you check this before the week ends because he does give you some valuable resources. You want to make sure that you buy your mini pelican shards, your energy, and your potanomium crystal, especially since we have more suppressor levels. So you may want to spend a little bit of time going back to inners to make sure you have the right materials. And our last thing in the casual tab is appointed research. You want to make sure that you pay attention to your energy because you get five free energy a day unless you reach the maximum of 20 energy. So you want to make sure that this does not cap. And that is pretty much the major things in the casual tab. One other thing that I will go ahead and mention is racing. You want to make sure that you go there and do your racing before the month ends, which should be on Saturday. So that way you can get your easy 400 Mira, which brings us to Mia's Kitchen, which you want to make sure that you do because it gives lots of experience and resources. Next, we have our daily bounties, and you definitely want to make sure that you choose Domain 9 so that way you can get the new keys to get that energy. Which brings us to the Select tab, starting with Joint Operations. So you want to make sure that you do this at least one time a day so that way you can get your daily first clear, and to get that, you have to do at least a JO that's level 6 or above. With this new patch, we're able to look at this week's Affix Preview. So as you see, Saturday, we have a chance to get Habuela shards. So if you're trying to go for that one, you may want to use a few Vitality Solutions on that day. Then we have Interstellar Exploration, and you want to check Vera as well as check Aspera so that way you can see all of your Stargates. And you may be wondering, well, what about Inners and Domain 9? Unfortunately, there are no Stargates in these areas, only Vera and Aspera. But how you tell if you have a level three Stargate is by simply looking at this weapon battery. If you have a number three, you have a level three Stargate. If you have a number two, you have a level two Stargate. But this could change once we reach level 95 and maybe we might get some more weapon materials. But if you don't have any level threes or level twos, you can simply hit dimensional trials and simply hit go. And then you can hit quick battle and use up all of your vitality. And you can do the same for matrix drills or go. Which brings us to our optionals. And that is giving gifts to your 1.0 characters. And the best way to do that is to go to the black market and talk to Hopkins. He island and do the claw machine or do trainings but one thing that i will mention with the new map overhaul they erase the training locations so what you have to do is go up to a training module so you'll see here in warren snowfield a training module is located right here once you locate one that's going to allow you to see the trainings that you have for the day so for the people that want to clear out the extra stuff in the wanderers log this could be helpful for you once you're here at the training facility you click on it scroll up to the top and then you can see what today's training is usually the lowest one gives the most points and click on go and that will direct you over to the training facility but again, unfortunately, they will not appear on your map unless you talk to them at least one time. Another optional that you can do are your six gray space fissures if you have not cleared out the gray space. But your biggest rewards are in the twilight zone, but you do have an eight hour time limit, so you could do this later. And the next optional is your Meoria fun zones. Since there are no new gachapons, I would put this in the optional, but if you do want to try to clear out your gachapons faster, you could consider doing these. 
And lastly, you do not want to forget to do your security force missions for the week so that we can get those old Vera coins in Mira. But if you enjoyed these weekly guys, I would greatly appreciate a like so that we can spread more on YouTube. Which brings us to our events. So of course, with a new patch, we have another task list where you do multiple things within the new area and you're going to be able to complete this to get a lot of good rewards. So I recommend that you take a look at these and see what you need to do so that way you can complete all of these. And then we have a challenger task list to where you simply just need to do most of the challenges and you're going to be able to get a lot of these good rewards. Then for those that got Leoa, she has a limited time gachapon. So if you're interested in this, feel free to go ahead and get it. But I would say that if you do not want the outfit, I don't think it's worth a roll on this. And with Leoa comes a reruns. Now, if you looked at my video, I don't really recommend rolling on Annabella or Ruby since they have pretty much been replaced by Lon and Leoa. But if you do end up rolling on Leoa, there is an order gift where if you do so many rows on her and her matrices you're going to get a couple extra rewards and the biggest event is cloudscape to where if you do this store you're going to be able to buy some really good rewards and how you get them is simply by just exploring the new area collecting plants doing various tasks and you're going to be able to buy whatever you want in here but one nice feature that they have is this rare find journal here you're going to be able to find some of the items that you're having trouble getting one of the items that you're going to need to get the Mia smart servant is dark essence you can simply click go and it's going to point you over to that area but you do need to be in domain 9 to see that exact area but you can also use this book to find enemies expiration points and missing vermilion statues there's also a limited time tanium purchase to where if you do plan to spend at least hundred dollars in this game this is actually a pretty good deal because not only do we get tons of dark crystals and equipment we also get a past relic shard box which these are pretty hard to get and we get 40 of them and lastly, we do have a specific Domain 9 event going on to where you need to click on this Clouds button. Here you have a daily login reward. You can quickly get you to the Cloudscape book to where you're able to find those rare materials. The second one gives you the location of where the new world boss is. Third one, you're able to play the event Bejeweled, which is actually fairly easy to do. And it's great to help out your friends because you're in an open area. So if you want, you can really make sure that your friend gets first place. But the daily cap every day is 2400. And if you don't have time to do it, you can always just do it in one day. And eventually we should get Wild Kusare. But the store offers some really good rewards. And eventually once we spend enough points, we're going to get even more rewards. So now let's go ahead and quickly talk about Domain 9. These are the locations of the Vermilion statues. And this is the order that you want to level them up. This will allow you to get the most energy throughout the week because all the energy resets next week. And you want to make sure that you try to get all the energy before the week is up. That's one of the reasons why I wanted to get this guide out earlier rather than on Sunday. If you want more detailed information, I recommend that you check out Micha Chucks, our Humble DK's video, to where they go into more detail, and they also have some exploration guides to help you along the way. And the next thing I want to go ahead and mention is the Smart Servant. Some people have wondered which one to pick. Generally, I think you can pick whichever one you want, but there is one downside to picking an Elemental Pacific Smart Servant, and that is why I'm going to mainly focus on leveling up Mia. And the reason being is because of Sequential Phantasm to where only elemental pacific attacks are altered attacks work. So if you have the boat smart servant and you go into the ice sequential, they are going to be immune to its attacks. But Mia does alter damage, so she will be able to affect all of them. But one thing to note is that altered is only going to do 75% of the damage. So once you level up all the smart servants, ideally you're going to want to pick the elemental pacific smart servant when you go in sequential. But if you want to try to min max right now, it might be best to focus on Mia. Another Another thing that you might want to try to do before the week is up is to do the tower to where you can group up with a raid party and you can go and kill these bosses. If you do, you're going to be able to get a box to where you can get a hundred energy. Altogether, there are eight bosses and you simply just have to go up to the multiple floors. This tower that I'm currently in only has three floors, but there's another tower that has five floors. Next, let's talk about the Mentor tab. So you'll notice right here that I have 100 points on each mentee. These points are used to determine the rewards I get once they graduate. And if you get over 600 points, you're able to get the max rewards. And that's for each mentee that graduates. But you're going to have to mentor them for at least 7 weeks so that way you can get the top rewards. But here you can see the main things that I can do to get points for the week. And I need to try to get at least 100 points. So you just want to do multiple challenges with your mentee. And the next thing you need to know about are the co-op missions. To where you need to do each of these things with one of your mentees 
so that way you get the point, which you can use in the mentorship store. The only thing I recommend that you don't do are void risks because you want to try to save all your attempts until Saturday once the month reset. But let's go ahead and take a look at the mentorship store. You'll see that I only have 850 points where the grand total is a thousand because I'm waiting to do my void risk. But the biggest thing is you want to make sure you buy your Titan compiling module because these are very good at getting the rare Titan stats. Other than that, I probably would just recommend either getting the data repeater or if you really want to min max, you can consider maybe getting some of these power ups for various challenges. But eventually, once you're able to graduate a few of your mentees, you should have plenty of points if you're reaching the 100 cap every week. Which brings us to the weekly tab. Hopefully you were able to go ahead and clear this out before the week reset. But the big thing here is that when you do get these key boxes, you want to make sure that you select the keys for purple and the yellow keys. The yellow keys are going to allow you to fight the new world boss and get smart servant shards to level up your smart servant. Whereas the purples are going to help you get more energy. Then we got our challenges. So if you're trying to do something like the Bygone Phantasm or Frontier Clash, you may want to save your maze kitchen so that way you can power yourself up. But starting with the Bygone Phantasm. So again, I recommend that you take a look at this weapon bonus. If you have a good weapon bonus, then you may want to go ahead and try to climb a few levels. And if your CS is high enough, you're going to be able to do this sneak to next level and jump up 11 levels as long as you can beat that floor. But Sequential Phantasm. Now, we are in the middle of the week and Sequential Phantasm has reset. So make sure that you at least attempt all of these before the week is over. Because before this reset, I was in first place. But since I haven't done any of the Sequential Phantasm, I instantly dropped to rank 9. And I already told you about the Smart Servants to where you may want to pick Mia just so that way you can squeeze a few extra your points but again that is in that min max territory then we have wormhole now this whole system has completely changed if you're familiar with what i mentioned in my everything coming in 3.0 video you already know how this works do make sure that you do this because you want to make sure you have your high score before the two weeks is up frontier glass you want to go ahead and knock this out so that we can get that gold gear origin of war remember the difficulty is quickly dropping so if you want to make sure that you get all the rewards i recommend that you start clearing this now Void Rift. Now, the month does reset on Saturday, so you want to be saving all of your charges until Saturday so that we can get a bunch of Void Energy to knock out the new Void Abyss. And Void Abyss, if you have not cleared it, you have until Saturday. Now, I went as a Flame DPS, and this is what I used. But again, if you don't have the strongest team, you may want to consider using Rainbow Tech because they are pretty powerful. Raids. In case you didn't know, if you ended up doing the raid on Monday, they also reset this week. Make sure that you clear the raid before the week ends. And break from destiny. Again, Saturday. The month ends, so make sure that you do this at least one time within the month so that we get those 250 Dark Crystals. And Arena. If you're trying to reach Grand Marshal, make sure you put a couple of hours in each day. Then we got our daily buys, so you want to go to Shop, Hot, and then buy your Vitality Solutions. But for me, I already have some pretty good gear, so I'm going to go ahead and pass. But if you do try to get some Vitality Solutions, I recommend that you don't get any more than two a day, because after that, I don't believe it's worth. But one thing you do want to try to get is your Advancement Modules and your Booster Modules for the week. And then we got the Limited Gift Pack with a bunch of new packages. Now, generally, most of these rewards are really good. The only ones that I think are not worth the money are the Domain 9 Sector Special Gift and the Domain 9 Rookie Gift. Unless maybe you're a brand new player, but again, I think you would still be better off just using your Tanium on better purchases. The best way to look and see if a pack is worth is you generally want it to be somewhere around 60 Dark Crystals. So let's take a look at the bi-weekly special. Here we have two red nucleus and two special vouchers for 480. So let's divide this by the amount of red nucleus and special vouchers to see how worth this is. 480 divided by four is 120. So again, it's not the greatest deal, but it is cheaper than just buying it for 150 dark crystal. But if we take a look at the bi-weekly special gift pack two, we can divide that by 10. So that's going to be 98 dark crystal. So it's a much better deal. And then if you take a look at the weekly opportunity gift box one, it's basically 60 dark crystals for a red nucleus on top of getting 50 dark crystals back. So this is a great deal and it's one that I recommend. But at the end of the day, it mainly depends on what you want the most. You may not want special vouchers and maybe you want booster modules or advancement module twos. So they're going to be worth more to you. But that is how I determine what packs they want to buy, especially if you're on a budget. And then we got the commentary, starting with the Crystal Dust Door. You want to make sure that you buy your Pointed Omni and Crystal 2, your Advancement Modules, your Booster Modules, your Core Control Modules, and your Augmentation Factors for the week. And if you have the Dust, you may want to go ahead and buy your very Special Gifts. Because a lot of people have been saying that they have not been able to level up Leowa's traits. 
But if you notice right here, I have a Vera special gift and it only gives me eight. But since I'm able to buy that with purple dust and a lot of the events give the Vera special gift, I can already send a full 163 and that's already going to give me 1300 awakening points. You can buy that with the other special gift that's over 2000. It's the same for a Sparrow special gifts to where there are no limit on these. So as you see, I already own a hundred. So if I turn a hundred Aspera special gifts, that's 800 points that I get to add to Leo. But I can buy 708 with the current blue crystal dust that I already have. So this would be my recommended way of how to level up Leo's traits. Space time store. You want to make sure you buy your advancement modules, your booster modules, and your data repeater for the week. And with your extra energy crystal dust, you can consider buying IP shards or combat engines. Crew store. Now, the only thing that you want to spend your points on are relics, and the relics that I recommend are either Omnium Shield, Space Time Rift, maybe a Drone Level 3, or Hologram Projector. Support store. You want to make sure you buy your gold, your Black Nucleus, your Space Time Crystal Dust, your Space Time Crystal Fragments. And with return points, you want to go ahead and buy your Space Time Crystal Fragments, your Radar Detectors, and if you can, Proof of Purchase and Gold Nucleus. Point store. Now, the only thing that you want to spend your points on are Spare Special Gifts, so that way you don't have to do Training, Black Market, or Cedar's Island again. But again, you could also use these to level up the new characters or you can consider leveling up your matrices or weapons by buying matrix data packs or weapon batteries and with your critical abyss points you can always buy clusters but besides that i just recommend that you focus on exploring domain 9 ideally you want to go around and collect all the energy because most of it will reset next week you want to try to get all the world exploration points as soon as you can so that way you can level up all your statues in the proper order well hopefully you guys enjoyed this and you find it helpful but other than that I will talk with you guys later.